Hey Matt, so we got another episode of Coffee Talk on the books here today. Uh, what have you been up to these days? Well, actually, I've been uh, reviewing my seed order. I've been trying to place products on farm and decide which field they need to be in and how we can manage them for success in 2021. So what do you look for in a hybrid then, Matt? Well, I look for long-term consistency and stability. I really want hybrids that will fit and align with our soil and management on farm. Uh, within that soil, I'm looking for known tolerance to stress, whether that be drought or drainage issues. Uh, those sandy farms really need something that's not going to pucker up and turn into a pineapple in the middle of July. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that's important. Uh, so when you're, when you're doing that, Matt, like how many varieties do you uh, look for in a mix? How do you bring that maturity split uh, in so it makes sense? Yeah, personally, you know, relatively small corn grower. Uh, we're talking a couple hundred acres, right? 300 on the upside. Three to four hybrids is the mix for me. I uh, look for about 20% early, so that 3,100. 60% uh, in that 3,250 range. And then 20% being the longer range. We're really pushing, we're really swinging for the fence on those uh, best acres. And, and within that, you know, I try to find out where a new product can fit in the mix. Obviously, the new product isn't always at the right crop heat units for me, uh, but I try to have a healthy, you know, a healthy look at something new and figure out where we can place it and observe, observe it throughout the growing season. So what hybrid characteristics or ratings help you place hybrids on the farm? You know, you're, you're unique that you, you know, you wear the hat of market development agronomist, with pride, you know, during the day and and, and uh, farm at home uh, uh, around that. So, so what do you look for? Yeah, I I really, you know, a low emergence rating that tells me a hybrid shouldn't go in the ground early in tough conditions where cold soils are going to persist. Uh, maybe we can get a cold drink shortly after. I'm going to keep those hybrids planted later in my schedule, right? Uh, I'm going to look for, uh, you know, hybrids with great standability and disease tolerance, especially if I'm going to work them into a continuous corn acre. Uh, that's going to be pretty important. So if a hybrid has northern corn leaf blight or maybe it's got tar spot, we're going to keep that off those corn on corn acres. We're going to put it on that uh, following a wheat crop, really, to maximize it and, and lower our disease pressure. Also, I believe, you know, we're going to have a willingness to adjust populations uh, to existing soil and fertility levels and consider things like nitrogen management how that can play into getting the most out of a hybrid for me uh, i look at a long season hybrid and look at its population tolerances hey if the soil can carry it we can up that nitrogen rate by 20 30 pounds to maximize the yield potential those are hybrids i'm going to fit into the mix uh, so how do traits play into that equation then, Matt? Like, you know, you've, you've talked about, uh, you know, some of how you, you split that out maturity-wise and everything, and, you know, how do traits play in? How do they affect your decision-making on farm? Yeah, a big believer in a mix. I know we have some really solid, top-performing G2 or above-ground uh, pest protection products, but if, if you look into farms with a history of maybe pressure from insects uh, of different sorts or continuous corn, that's where the G8s really come into play. Uh, not so much chasing a product based on its trait platform because that is really just an added defensive package that's going to, you know, hedge our risk in season. What are your go-to hybrids then in our, in our trading area and why, why is that? Yeah, I like A8303. That's my long day option. It's loaded with uh, yield potential. I think it's been a really solid product for a lot of years. I love 7790 for its pop out of the ground. I love its grain quality and I know it's going to stand late season. It's a, it's a beauty. And 7373 for those later planted acres. Those are the acres that maybe I uh, I don't have the population tolerance or the soil fertility levels with, and I know I can get a lot of yield out of that hybrid. It has probably some of the best yield to moisture or yield for its maturity 
uh, you know, in the industry. So I'm really happy with that mix. And I look to fit in newer products like a 7818 into that mix too at a smaller percentage because it has some strong versatility and uh, good characteristics as well. Well, that's great. Now that, that represents your product mix on farm and, a, and an excellent product mix, you know, here in, in the greater Chatham-Kent uh, area. I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit, Matt. And uh, so if we, if we move north in our zone, uh, what could be your key uh, hybrids in, in a mix in a little bit earlier maturity area? Yeah, that long-term stable product, always know that you're going to have clean grain with good standability is A6757 G8. I love a new product called A7197 G8. That one really has some promising characteristics, that drought, that wet heat tolerance. I love its late season plant health and it's a powerhouse against stock rots. Uh, and then if we're talking even earlier, if we're gonna get 2,900 heat units, 6694 G2. Looks like a great product with that above ground insect protection. That's a great package. Yeah, I'm really excited about a couple of those new those new products there, um, which take our existing lineup, I think, and you know, add some yield and, and you know, protecting uh, traits and characteristics. Is there anything else we should know about hybrid uh, selection, Matt? Look for maturity mixes, look for strong plant characteristics, and of course, yield is ROI. Yield is ROI, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you can't say it better than that, folks. Uh, this is an ROI business. Uh, we're not here just for recreation and uh, yields the bottom line. So uh, I appreciate those tips. I think we're gonna make good, good uh, sound choices on farm and we're excited for what's yet to come. Can't wait to open up the shed doors again. <laughs> you can say that right.